Okay, so I have a new scene set up almost the same, except for I don't have any Playmaker FSMs in it. And what we have here is just a cube that is a prefab. So I've saved it as a prefab. We search down here in prefabs like this, and we drag it out, and I've duplicated it across the scene so we have a bunch of different prefabs. You can have them any position you want. We just want to make sure that they are, in fact, prefabs, and they do have a box collider on them. So we're going to use these as our clickable objects. Of course, you're also going to need some kind of a directional light if this is a lit scene, and you're going to need, of course, a camera. So why don't we grab our first prefab, whatever that may be, and add a Playmaker FSM, and start editing this. Now, at the beginning, we don't want this cube to really do anything. We just want it to be until it's clicked. But I do like to do some kind of initialization on this sort of empty first state. And what I'm going to do is get a reference to itself, because this will come in handy later. So if we type self, we just have destroy self. But if we type owner, it's here called get owner. So we're getting this cube itself and saving it to a variable. So we've called it self. The next thing I want to do is have a mouse enter and mouse exit. So when the mouse enters over something, it changes color, we play a sound, and when the mouse comes off, it will change color and play a sound or whatever we want it to be. And luckily, Playmaker has built in events for this so that we don't have to program that specifically. So I can just add a state, and you can call a state whatever you want. I'm just going to call mine hover enter. And I'm just going to duplicate this because I'm lazy. And we'll call this one hover exit. And now we're going to use a global event to trigger this that's built in. So we just right click, choose add global transition, and use a system event. Now we do have ones like mouse drag, mouse down, mouse over, all these sort of things. So we're going to use mouse enter. system events and mouse exit. Now when our mouse enters over this, we want it to change to a certain material and when it comes off it's going to change to another material. That's how we're going to do it. If you're using some sort of an outline system, you could, you know, do that as well. And to do this, I'm going to make two variables and these are going to be material variables. And actually, you know what? I'm going to have three. So I'm going to have one called hover, which will be the color when it's hovering. I'm going to have one that's called selected for when I have a selected game object. And then I'm going to have one called unselected for when something's not selected. So I've already gone ahead and made um, materials here. You can just make any kind of material you want. So I just have these materials already set up. There's nothing special about them. Just grab my project window and just drag it up here for the moment just so I can see both of these things. And in my variables, I'm just going to plop these in. So we have, um, say, selected. I want, I don't know, I, I'm just going to keep using this nice green color. Unselected should be your default color because this is how it will start. So mine are blue. And hover, I want something that's easy to see, so I'm going to change it to this red color. I can move my project window back down here. So, inspector, we are working with the prefab, so we want to update all these prefabs. So I'm going to click apply, and you can see that all of them now have a FSM on them. And we can just hit play and check this out and make sure that it it works. And it doesn't work. It's not doing anything. However, you can see the hover, enter, exit um, does change, but I forgot to add the materials. So when it hovers, enters, we want it to always change to the hover color. So let's go to Actions and search Material. And uh, you can see I've used this recently called Set Material. 
and it's saying you're working with the prefab this will break the prefab connection are you sure you want to do this and I'm gonna say yes so we're gonna break the prefab connection but we'll re-establish it after no problem okay so what material do we want to set we want to set the selected material now we do have a problem here when our mouse comes off what color do we want to set it back to if we set it back to the deselected color what if we hover over a selected object and unhover then it will go back to the wrong color right that's not going to work for us so we need to create a variable and create a bool and we're going to maybe I'll just call this um, is selected so it's asking is this selected so by default it will be false so that's good now we need to do some kind of a bool test or bool check okay we have bool test and what's the bool that we're testing is selected so if it's true it's selected If it's false, it's not selected. So we'll just call this uh, unselected. And now we can just go down here and set the correct material. So I'll call this selected mat for selected material. Now, I, I hope you're following along with this as I do this. Otherwise, um, you know, when you go to do it yourself, you're probably going to have to rewatch this again. So, you know, it's probably good to pause and just follow along. I think that's the best way to learn. Okay, so we're just going to copy this material. Copy selected actions. I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so when it's selected we want the um, selected material, oh the hover material shouldn't be selected, the hover material should be hover we'll paste this here so unselected material should be unselected so let's save our progress and we'll hit play and as you see we just sort of build this up layer by layer we don't try and like code in everything all at once you know, if that's the case, um, then, you know, we're not going to be able to figure out what the error is. And as you can see here, I forgot to update the prefab, so only this one cube is working. However, it is working, so that's great. That's a good start. Okay, so we're going to go to the inspector, make sure to apply, and it will apply these to everything. Now, the next thing is we want this to be able to, you know, to click this, and when we click it, you know, this bool should flip from being, you know, is select, not being selected to being selected right so we're going to use a custom event we could use a built-in global transition called system events uh, mouse down and we'll see if the mouse is clicked down on this however I don't want to do that because I want to manage this from one central FSM I want one FSM to know everything that's being clicked I don't want all of these clicks to be decentralized otherwise it's hard to keep track of what's what's changing so after this we'll create one FSM just to manage those so instead we're going to create our own global event called um, I'll call mine custom click just so that I know it's custom and yes we're gonna break the prefab and we should make sure that it's clicked off to be global so we'll add another state and I'll just call this clicked. I'm just going to add global transition, custom clicked, and now we will know when this has been clicked. So when it clicks, we want this bool variable is selected to change to true, or if we click a second time, we want to change to false. So what we want to do is flip that bool variable. So we search bool and you can see it in my recents here um, you know we could test if it's false and then change it to be true and test, test if it's true and change it to be false but that's more work than just saying whatever it is give us the opposite version of this then once it's flipped we're gonna check it and to see 
which material we should set. So we'll say bool test, just like we used over here. And it is selected, just like before. We can say it is, uh, if it's true, it's been selected. If it's false, it's unselected. So we can go like this and just reuse these end values here so we don't have to reset up the materials. So let's save this and make sure we apply it to everything. But you know now we need a way to actually click this because currently we, you know we can't just click on the screen and it, it won't fire this event. We need some you know way to manage all this. So we'll save again. I like to save a lot. And I'm just going to do it from the, the main camera. There's no reason why. It's just a nice central place to keep everything and that we know we'll always need uh, a camera so it won't get deleted. So I created a new FSM. And what we want to do is wait for what? How? What's our input? Our input's our mouse. So we need some sort of a mouse event. So mouse. And we want to see if the mouse is down. So here we go, called get mouse down. And yeah, we're going to use the left mouse. And the send event will be, let's just call it left down so we know what it is. And we'll call this first one called mouse click. And we'll drag it out. And when the mouse is down, we want to know what we've clicked on. So we've got a handy little action here in Playmaker that really simplifies this for us called mouse pick. And what it's actually doing is casting a ray from the camera into the scene. So wherever our mouse is, it's going to say from the camera to the mouse, to the scene, what have we picked? So this is really cool. If we have to do this by C-sharp, it's, it's a little bit more work, but Playmaker makes this nice and easy for us. So I'll just leave the ray distance to 100. And we want to store the game object that's been clicked. So I'll create a new variable, and I'll call this, maybe I'll call this picked object. Okay, we don't want to do this every frame. Just once per mouse click do we want to check. So let's call this pick. And after we picked, we can just add a finish state because we just want it to finish right away. And then we need to check to see if we did actually pick anything. So if we picked nothing, it's going to come back as null, meaning we picked no game objects, nothing's been picked. So let's just go null and see. And we have game object is null. And we're going to check to see if this is true or false. So if we picked an object is null. So I'll just call it null for my state. And then the other one I can call as object. Again, we don't need to do this every frame. We're just going to do once. So check if null. Okay, so if it's null, we can just go back to the mouse click event again and wait for another mouse click. If it has an object, we need to actually do something. We're, we need to send an event to that object that we've clicked and say, hey buddy, we've clicked you. Right, because we set up a global event, now we need to trigger that global event in some way. So let's just go send event, and we can see here, send event. And what's the target? Well, the thing that we clicked on is where we're going to send it. So we're going to say game object, specify game object, and now picked object. Okay, so if you click or pick on an object that can't take an event, that's fine. It's just going to send the event and nothing will happen. So don't be worried about clicking on objects that 
you know, are not playmaker objects. It won't do anything. So the event that we want to send is a global one called custom click, which we set up. Then let's add a transition of finished. And we'll go back and wait for another mouse click. Let's hit save, play, and see if we made any mistakes. The moment of truth for anyone programming any games. Okay, our hover works. Click, 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 and unclick. Look at that. So that's perfect. We can't deselect anything yet, uh, except for by double clicking on it. So if I click off screen, we don't have anything set up. And if we click one brand one, you know, normally we want to deselect the other ones unless we're holding control. So we sort of have the control function working here, but without using the control. So why don't we look at that in the next video, and we're going to stop right here, and this was part one of RTS selection type control using Playmaker.